Hi guys, welcome back to the Seaborn. Let's start with Seaborn's distribution plots. When dealing with a set of data, often the first thing we want to do is to get a sense for how the variables are distributed. In this lecture, we will learn some useful plotting options that allow us to visualize the distribution of a data set. These distribution plots include dist plot, joint plot, pair plot, rug plot, KTE plot, and so on. Seaborn comes with built in datasets that can be loaded using a function load dataset and the name of the dataset. We will use various built in datasets for learning purpose in the Seaborn section. Let's start with a new Jupyter Notebook. Go to File, New Notebook, Python 3, and start working in Seaborn. I hope you have already installed Seaborn library. The first thing we need to do, we need to import Seaborn. The official and most common way to import Seaborn library is as SNS. So import Seaborn as SNS. Let's run this cell. And we want our output within this Jupyter notebook. Let's set matplotlib inline as well. So here we have. So let's explore the list of data set which are available within Seaborn. So what we can do, we can call SNS dot get data set and press tab to auto complete and run this code. Don't worry about this user warning. So we have a list of data set, attention, brain, network, car crashes, flights, and so on. Let's use tips in this section. So let's add few cells first and tips equal to SNS dot. We can load a data set using SNS dot load. Press tab to auto complete and pass in the name, which is tips. Let's run this cell. So we have loaded the data set tips into tips. Let's get a concise summary of our dataset now. And we know we can use info to get the concise summary of our dataset. So tips.info. If we run this cell, here we have our dataset have 244 entries and seven columns. And let's check the head of our dataset. We want to know as much as possible about our dataset. So tips dot head. We know if we don't pass anything to head, it will display first five lines or first five rows in our data set. Let's run this set. So the data set has total bill along with the amount of tip the customer left for the staff, along with some other information, whether male or female, smoker or non-smoker, day, time, and the size of the party. So let's start with dist plot. The most convenient way to take a quick look at a univariant distribution in Seaborn is the dist plot function. So we can call dist plot sns dot dist plot and let's pass in total bill and grab the column tips total bill and let's run this cell. So here we have a distribution plot along with a fit of kernel density estimate. So this line is a kernel density estimate fit. If you want, you can press shift tab to explore more on the documentation string. We can pass in the data. Here we have passed in total bills. We can set the size of the bin. We can set 30, 40, 50 or whatever we want. Hist is true, we are getting histogram. KDE is true, we are getting a line, which is KDE. So lots of other options as a parameters. We will talk about KDE later on. Let's 
set this KDE as false at the moment. So let's copy this one, paste it here, and KDE equal to false. Maybe we want to set the bin size as well. So bins say equal to 50. And let's run this cell again. So now we have 50 bins and there's no KDE line. So the data suggests that the most of the bills are between 10 and 20. So this was little intro on hist plot. Let's talk about another one which is joint plot. We want to do some comparison. Like how much the customer gave in tip based on their total bill. CBAN provides a convenient way of plotting bivariant or two variables in the data. And in that case, we have to use joint plot. The function basically match up two distribution plots with our choice of what kind of plot we want, and that is what we give in a parameter. Let's plot one thing first, s and s dot joint plot. And if we press shift tab, so we have to pass in x, y. So the kind is scatter, which is default. You can explore more on these kinds that we can use. And lots of other parameters to work with like xlim, ylim, and so on. Let's pass in x here. x equal to, we want total bill. Let's copy total bill from here. And along y, we want, say, tip because we want to have a comparison between total bill and tip. And what is our data? We need to tell the data. And data is tips. Let's pass in only these three parameters and run this cell. So here we have a joint plot. So what we did, we passed in the data set and tells which columns we want to plot in the joint plot. And Default is a scatter plot. So this is essentially just two distribution plots. One is here and the second one is here. Along with scatter plot having tip on y and bills on x axis. We can see that most of the tips are less than $4, like here. The maximum in tip is somewhere here $10 for $50 in total bill. We can see some trend in the data as well. Looks like the more the customer is paying in the bill, more the customer is leaving as a tip. We will explore this in detail in a while. Let's play with kind parameter first. So what if we pass hacks? Let's copy this one. And instead of scatter, kind equal to hacks so default is scatter we are passing in hacks let's run this cell so the plot looks different now this is similar to scatter plot if we look at scatter plot it has dots in the plot for total bill and tips and here we have hexagons so if we pass kind as hacks, rather than displaying all points as scatter plots, the plot is showing the distribution with hexagons. And their color distribution is telling the data points within the hexagon. Darker the color, more data points are there. The lighter the color, the less data points are in that hexagon. Let's pass in another kind here and say we want rag and run this cell. So rag is actually a regression. We have not learned about linear regression yet and we will discuss this in details in the machine learning section. We will come back and discuss how the line is built 
but at the moment just take it as it is. With kind equal to reg, the plot is like a scatter plot with a regression line drawn by Seaborn. This is just showing almost like a linear fit to the scattered data points. Let's not make things very complicated in the data visualization section. So with kind equal to reg, we are getting a line fitted to our scattered data points. So let's move on and pass in kind equal to KDE. Copy paste and pass in kind equal to KDE and let's run this cell here. So now we have a kernel density distribution. This is a two dimensional KDE plot showing the darker region with density where most of the data points match up and the lighter region where not many data points match up. Moving forward, the next important one is pair plot. We will be using pair plot function quite often in our course, especially in the machine learning section while doing the exploratory data analysis. So we want to have a quick look on our entire data to see the pairwise relationship. This can be done using Seaborn's function pair plot. Pair plot plots multiple pairwise bivariant distributions in the data set. Let's call pair plot now. SNS dot pair plot and what we need to pass in the entire data sets because we want to have a pairwise relationship on our entire data set. So let's run this cell. So if you have a bigger data set, this could take some time because it's plotting number of plots in the same time. Let's adjust the size so that we can see a complete plot here. So here we have. So the pair plot creates a matrix of axes and shows the relationship of each pair of columns in our data set. By default, it also draws the univariant distribution histogram of each variable along the diagonal. So here we have total bills, and here we have size, tips, total bill. So tips versus size, tips versus tip, tips versus total bill. So we have a complete overview on our data set. So we can see some trend here, tips versus total bill and so on. Once again, please note that for the larger data frames, it takes longer time to plot the pair plot. Our data set tip is relatively small, so we are fine with the time here. So along with plotting pairwise relationship across an entire data frame, for the numerical column, pair plot supports a color with hue argument as well, which is for categorical column as well. For example, we can display information of uh, the categorical column, such as male or female, which is a sex column. So we can pass in along with tips hue equal to sex. And let's rerun this cell here. And here we have plot in two different colors. Now we can see that all the green points are female and all the blue points are male. We can specify the color palette. For example, we can say cool, warm, and many other options that we will discuss in the style and color section later on. So let's move on to another very useful plot, rug plot. Rug plot. So let's move back to the same size of screen now. Here we have. Rug plot is a very simple concept and just plot sticks on an axis for every data point on a univariant distribution. So we can call SNS dot rug plot and let's pass in tips and the column total bills. We can press tab to auto complete and let's run this cell here. So it should be rug plot R U G. Let's rerun. 
So here we have the rug plot. So what rug plot is doing? Rug plot is drawing line for every single point in the past column, which is total bill. And these are the building block for KDE plot that we have seen in our earlier plots. Let's move on and talk about the rug plot versus dist plot. Let's put rug plot and dist plot together in a single canvas. So what we can do s and s dot rug plot and call tips total bills copy this one paste it here instead of rug plot this plot tips and total bill and let's say we want color equal to red we know we get the kde let's kde equal to false So what we're doing, we are putting rug plot and dist plot together on a single canvas. Let's run this cell. So here we have a distribution plot and a rug plot. So the difference between distribution plot and rug plot is that the histogram essentially has bins and it counts how many sticks or lines are in that bin. Then show it as a number up along y-axis like we have more lines in this pin and it is higher than the previous one here this one is highest so we have so we have maximum ticks in this pin actually the number of all the sticks in rug plot are stacked on each other in the distribution plot for the respective bin so the more lines in the rug plot higher the bin in this plot and the less lines in the rug plot smaller the bins in the dist plot so let's talk about kde plot now so the kde plots replace every single observation with a gaussian or normal distribution centered around that value so with our tips data if you want kde plot like uh, sns dot kde plot passing tips and once again total bills let's put rug plot and this plot as well here so rug and this so what we are going to do we are plotting kde plot rug plot and this plot for total build on the same canvas so let's run this cell here so here we have this line as a kde plot this green is a distribution plot and these blue sticks are the rug plot so we see that this kde is a gaussian normal distribution centered around these values here so let's plot this for tips now and see how it is different to the total bill let's run this cell so here we have a rug plot kde plot and distribution plot for tip column so as we said we will talk about the kernel density estimation plots uh, later on let's try to understand kernel density estimation plot and uh, jump on to the uh, reference notebook so here we have kernel density estimation plot kde plot so how do we actually build kde line based on a rug plot so now we know what is rug plot let's try to understand the kernel density plot based on the rug plot now so if you follow this link it is very beautifully explained how the kernel density plot is built let's try to understand with these figures so the figure shows the comparison of histogram on left and kernel density estimate on right which is constructed using the same data 
each of six black one two three four five six and three and three six six black dashes in the rug plot with six individual kernels so one two three four five six six individual kernels mean we have six normal distributions here on top of each line this is the center for this line and we have a gaussian distribution here the kernels in red dashes are summed to make the kernel density estimate which is a solid blue line and the data points are the rug plots along the horizontal line so these are horizontal lines we have rug plot and this is our kernel density estimation based on all of these red kernels for each data point in the rug plot so once again what kde does kde plot replace every single observation with a gaussian normal distribution centered around the value for each value we have each gaussian distribution so to get better understanding on kde let's copy this code and paste it in our working notebook so don't worry about understanding this code you will not use such codes in the data analysis this is only to create a diagram for you to understand how the KDE plots are calculated. I will go through the steps and explain what the code is doing. So in this step one, we are importing NumPy, Matplotlib and Stat from SciPy, which is another library in Python. Now in the next step, we are creating a data set using random.randn from NumPy then we are creating a rug plot for our data set using sns.rugplot after that setting up the x axis for the plot using max and min values in the data set so we are finding the max and minimum value from our data set and setting the x and y min using dataset.min function minus 2 and dataset.max plus 2 for x max in the next step, we are creating 100 equally spaced points using lin space, and we know how this lin space works. So, in the next step, we are setting up a bandwidth, and if you want to know more about this thing, you can follow this Wikipedia link. And here we have the formula for bandwidth. After that, we are creating a empty list, kernel list, and then we are using a for loop for data points in data set create a kernel for each point and append it to list so kernel equal to stat dot norm this is again a formula and you can uh, read more about this thing if you want if you press shift tab once again you don't need to worry about this code the most important thing is how the kernel density estimation is calculated so in this code we are plotting the basis function and appending the kernel to kernel list and then we are setting the limits let's run this cell here so here we have the output from our code these are the rug plots and for each rug plot we have a gaussian distribution and the rug plot is centered for each gaussian distribution here so we need to sum the basis function to get the kde plot Let's copy another block of code from the reference notebook. What we are going to do now, we have kernel list, which we have created here. And then we are using np.sum and getting the sum of KDE along x is equal to zero. And the next one, plotting the figure, and here we are adding the initial rug plot once again just to see how it looks like and uh, then we are getting rid of y ticks here so this is just to make this plot better looking let's run this code here so we have the kernel density estimation plot based on all these rug plots so once again what we did we had the data points and for each data point we got the Gaussian distribution where each data point is centered for each Gaussian distribution and then we are getting sum of all basis function to get the KDE plot a single sum of basis function which is a KDE plot
Great job guys. This was all about distribution plot. I hope you got a very good understanding how these KDE plots are uh, made. So in the next lecture, we will talk about categorical plots, which is another very useful and very important section in the data visualizations using Seaborn. See you in the next lecture. Good luck.